Okay, we're going to learn Chumash today. Uh, this is the oh, Eloi Nishmat, oh, Eloi Nishmat of Alicia Meir Ben Yaakov Akon Vidvora, my son. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. a little bit of Chumash because this is going to get us in there. I have to show this to you. I promised you last week. We have to. We're going to diverge because some things are very important to go into, and the technique of the Baal Shem Tov is a very important thing to go into. You're going to get it. You're going to get exposed to it. Relax. Akiva, please. It's okay. Relax. It's like, was it something I said or something? I feel like I didn't shower or something. What is this? Okay. You will be exposed to a technique. Okay. And we're going to go through it and go through the words, the technique of the Baal Shem Tov. Don't forget, they say his level, who was an unbelievable level, so high. What page? Well, I'm, I'm, I have to find it first, and then I'll let you know. Okay? Uh, his level was, you know, so high, and, you know, and he ascribes to his level as two things. His prayer, and that he went to the mikvah regularly. Okay? So... It's worth it to take a look at the technique of his prayer, and then we'll understand even why that it is so important. So, now, to tell you what page that we're on. I'm getting closer. I feel like I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we are page 31. Noah. Parshat Noah. Noah and the Ark. So we all know that, you know, everything that happened there and God told Noah on verse 13, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, right, yada, yada, right, I'm going to destroy them, yada, yada, I want you to make yourself an ark of gopher wood. What's that beeping? Gopher wood. Uh, They call it uh, atse gopher. (laughs) I don't know, okay. I'm not a lumbersmith, okay? Okay, so in any ways, they made an, make an ark of gopher wood, make the ark with compartments, and cover it inside and out with pitch. Right, he had to do this. The ark, of course, this is going to be the refuge against the flood. And this is how you should make it. Okay, 300 cubits by 50 cubits, right? What's a cubit? Go ask Bill Cosby, okay? Verse 16. Verse 16 is the interesting one we have to focus on. <laughs> Verse 16 says, A window you shall make for the ark, and to a cubit finish it from above. Put the entrance of the ark in its side, make it with a bottom, second, and third decks. Okay? I think that's the end. Right? So the interesting thing is you have to look at the beginning of verse 16. In the Hebrew is the most interesting part. When it says a window you shall make for the ark, don't forget, art scroll took Rashi and shoved it right back in to the translation so you don't get to see the raw translation, okay? In other words, they spoon feed you, double spoon feed you, and basically make your mind one-sided, okay? So that you don't get to play around with just the raw translation, but we need to just take a step back, okay? We, we, uh, so the word in Hebrew is sohar. Sohar tase lateva. So Tsohar literally means make a shining. Okay? A, a shining you shall make for the ark. Literally. So Rashi, of course, interprets that. Sohar, right? Is He says, there are those who say window. That's a one version. And some people say, no, it's a good stone that gives light. They actually did have a weird incident in... The, uh, in, in Egypt when they were doing excavations and they were down deep into the underneath the pyramids and all of the catacombs that are, exist down there an interesting thing happened where they were getting closer to the architect's office way down below that suddenly their watches their, their watches have luminous uh, dials started to illuminate and they came to a stone that was in the archaeologist's office that when you take something luminous and put it against the, closer to the stone, it makes it shine. Go figure. They really ha- have such a rock like that. There really are rocks like that. Don't ask me how it works. Okay? 
But that's not the important here, okay? We understand the simple explanation, a window or a shiny stone, because obviously the place is dark and you're going to need light, okay? But that's not how the Hasidic movement uh, takes, understands, or the Baal Shem Tov understands this. And it's going to open up the entire whole Indian of Noah and the Teva, Noah and the Ark, okay? Which is going to be a different, completely different understanding of tefillah, of prayer. So the word Sohar literally means shining. Sohar tase la teva. First of all, let me just hand this around before I forget. If you could just like put a check mark by your name. Sohar means a shining you shall make for the te- for the ark. And the ark they call in Hebrew teva. But there's another word that the word teva means. What does it mean, Amelia? What? No, that's teva, right? Teva. Box. No. Word. Wow. In Hebrew, the word for word is word. It's teva. Sorry. Teva. So really, in essence, what he's saying is, a shining you shall make for the word. Okay? In other words, that we're going to pass out right now, you shall make the words to shine. Okay? Now we're now I just wanted to show you that in the Chumash, okay? And now we're going to pass these out. Okay, I hope there's enough for everybody. Otherwise, couples will have to share. Okay. Okay, yes, we're done with the Chumash. You can close it now. Let me just see your page. Good. I just want to make sure I have it. Okay. If there's not enough for everybody, then I can make copies next time, God willing. Okay. Just stack that. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get, it should be one page. Some people had two pages in the beginning because I, that's how the copy machine works. Okay. Interesting thing that happens, this, uh, this book is called the Baal Shem Tov on the Torah. The Baal Shem Tov, according to the weekly Parsha, basically, of course, the Baal Shem Tov never wrote anything. Everything that was written was collected from his students. And one of the students put together every single thing that he collected from a hundred different books of a hundred different masters that put it together that they all said it in the name of the Baal Shem Tov, okay, who was the founder of the Hasidic movement, okay. An unbelievable soul, they say, you know, who took all of the Kabbalistic writings and was able to bring it to such a place where a person, an ordinary person, can have a direct relationship, a spiritual relationship with God to such a degree. He innovated Judaism in, 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 in a mind blowing way, okay? To bring the Torah and understanding of the Torah in, a, in an unbelievable light. So here we have, in the middle, when it's going along, uh, the Parshas, this book, all of a sudden in Parshas Noah, at this Pasuk, it goes into a huge section called the Amunat Tefillah, which is, means literally the pillar of prayer. A huge section of the book, about a hundred and something pages, all of a sudden it breaks off this much, this thick, just goes on the Baal Shem Tov's technique of prayer and all of his recommendations and how he do it and what to do. Okay, it's a lot, we're not going to cover it all, don't worry. Okay, but I'm just saying that all of a sudden from this idea here, this is where everything takes off. So here are the words. We, we read the words on top where it says you shall make a shining light for the ark and cover it of one cubit on top of it. Make it lower second and third stories. Lower second and third stories, of course, according uh, simply understood means that the lower was for the garbage, the middle was for the animals and the top floor was for the human beings. But we're going to have a completely different understanding here. Come you and your entire household into the ark. Okay, then those are the next words. Okay, so now just go now to number 15 where you see the number 15 there. You shall make a shining light for the ark. Okay, so what does this mean? The Rivash, that's the name of the Baal Shem Tov. They called him the Rivash. Okay, may he rest in peace said that the letters and words that a person speaks in his prayer and in his study of Torah must be made to shine. Here is where it is introduced. Okay, the idea, an unbelievable deep technique of meditation. This is why some people who know this, it takes them so long to pray. 
Okay? Because why? They have to, you have to picture the letters in your mind. And not only that, you have to picture the letters shining in your mind. Each letter by letter. So the word Baruch, right? You have to actually look, know what the letters look like. And then you have to use your powers of imagination to make them shine in your mind's eye. Okay? Letter by letter. Baruch. Imagine now just trying to do that along with just trying to understand what the word means. Okay? And try to do that with every single one of your words of tefillah and, and Torah. Okay? Don't freak out. It can be done. Okay? And I asked my rabbi, come on, one letter at a time. It's practice. This is Jewish Tai Chi. Okay? So, so the, that's rule, that's the idea, concept number one. Now the idea here is this, and this is why it is so unbelievably powerful. Now the letters, as we know, to take a step back, if you look at the Balatanya, in say, Ashara Yehud Ve'emuna, there's a certain sections dealing with also that God uttered ten utterances to make the creation. If you look in the first chapter in Genesis, it says, and God said, let there be light, and God said, let there be a firmament, and it went on, right? So it says, God spoke, and the world came to being, right? So through his words, which is basically the combination of the letters, everything are, uh, permutates and basically forms every single thing that we have in existence today. It's not that he spoke, and then he left, he spoke, and they're still being said. In other words, they still give everything its absolute animation right in the here and now. Everything really in its spiritual form, in the most inner building block of its existence, is formed of letters and combinations of letters. Okay? This is the matrix stuff. Okay? A big Kabbalist, they say about Lubavitcher Rebbe, he was able to, when he would look, walk into a room and he would see a table, he wouldn't see a table, he would see Shin Lamed Chet Nun. He would see the letters. He wouldn't see a chair, he would see Chaf Samech He, the letters that spell out the word chair. That's the inner core, the inner spiritual uh, DNA of every single thing in existence. It constantly gives everything its existence. That the eyes, if our eyes would be peeled off and our minds would be open, Yes, we would be able to connect to those letters. But suffice it for now, just to know that the letters, the 22 letters we have in our alphabet are not just, not just a language. It's not just a language. They are the primordial energy fields that make creation. And the combination of those energy fields gives everything its unique experience. Follow? Okay? It's very, very deep stuff. Maybe someday we'll get more into it in Repeat different chapters. Sentence. What? Repeat that sentence. 22 primordial energy fields that make up creation. Okay? And a letter is not just a letter. When Moshe Rabbeinu killed the Egyptian, he didn't throw him off a scaffold or strangle him. Okay? Like Vincent Price. Right? I didn't know that was Vincent Price. <laughs> that was, yes, I give away my age. Okay? It wasn't that he killed the Egyptian with, an, with the word of God. He said, uh, according to the Baal Shem Tov, three letters, according to the Arizal, it was the 42-letter name of God. He said a name. When he said a name, the Egyptian man was dead. Because what is it about? It's about the combination of letters that have an energy. If you say, B, B, come, if, you, if you're sensitive to it, you can feel it resonate in your body. B. But shh, right? Right? If you say any letters, they have a vibration to them. Ella, Ella Fitzgerald did break the glass. They did it. I saw it. I don't know how or when or where. Somehow, somebody showed me on those uh, Mythbusters. Oh. It was a Mythbuster show with a can of sound really break a glass, right? So they had a speaker do it and they imitated the sound. They broke the glass with the speaker. They said, We have to do this live. We have to get a live person. So they got a rock star. They got a real rock star who's got an unbelievable voice and tried it for hours. Like, oh, whatever. He went, well, he went for lunch. I don't know, maybe we went to smoke something. Then he came back and then he was able to do it. Okay? He's able to break a glass with a vibration. Okay? 
So vibrations are very powerful. Letters are very powerful. When we say a letter of prayer, it is very powerful. When you, when now, so what, are we, what is he really saying in this one thing? You shall make the word to shine. And what does this have to do with Noah and the ark? Okay? It's because really what it's about is the, the, the word that you form and then you make to shine and visualize. It's a meditation. And you visualize it, right? And then, as, you, as you're going to see in the later text, you yourself, you become the letters. You go into the ark. The ark is the teva. You become Noah in the ark. That word is the word that basically is the only place where you could save yourself from the flood. What do I mean by flood? Right? So we've spoken about this before. That, you know, there's a Sanskrit word called vritis. Veritas means thought waves. That you just like our cell phones emit waves, or there's from the towers emitting to our cell phones and everything like that, and there's TV waves and radio waves and all kinds of waves that are bouncing all around all the time. On a very higher, subtle level, so the thoughts of people are also bouncing. We say every thought creates an angel. Every thought that you think has is an angel. And an angel is an energy. So imagine now, if you're thinking 60,000 thoughts a day, that's a lot of energies that's constantly beaming out of your brain on a certain, in a certain dimension. So imagine now, everybody, that's why Rabbi, you know, that's, imagine now everybody in the city, even just the people in this room. Zzz, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay? It's like, uh, so imagine now all the people in Houston, in Texas, the world, New York, right? Right? Imagine all of the thoughts that people are thinking that it's impossible that it doesn't have some kind of effect even on your subconscious mind. It's impossible. It has an effect on the world. For sure the world. Okay? There's a book called The Hidden um, Message in Water by a Japanese uh, scientist. And they studied water and the crystals formed by water. Oh, right. I saw it. That and was on What the Bleep Do You Know. And the written word, yeah, they movie. would put a, a, a glass of water and just tape to it, or attach it, a paper with written words, you fool. And on the other one, thank you. The difference, it, they studied mm -hmm. the crystals in the water. The one that had you fool was like an earthquake. It was the most awful looking, deformed, didn't even look like crystals. The one that had thank you on it had the most exquisite crystal. In most exquisite form. Yeah, it's very, very I have powerful. The, I, it's, it's, I have you can see it. It's in a scene on What the Bleep it, Do You Know if you ever go rent that no, movie. That it's the energy. It's a good movie. It's, it's, it's tied in. Really all right, all right. Now I forgot where it was. Anyway, so, thank you. Um, that was good, though. Okay, so, but the idea of thoughts, okay, that's what Rabbi Nachman says. When you do it, Bodudu, the best time to do it, Bodudu, is in the middle of the night, and you go out in the forest, because there's all, uh, there's, you know, it's less, it's less, there's less stuff going around. To do what? There's, when you do hit your your meditation, when you go and talk to God in yes, your own I mind, hit bodedut. I don't even know how you spell it. I guessed. Okay. The idea here is this, <coughs> and you're right. What kind of thoughts are they thinking? What kind of thoughts? Okay, the Jew, he's thinking holy thoughts. God, I love you. I want to come close. I just want to be with you all day, God. Right? And you know, or I just wanted to give me another mitzvah. Right? Just give me another mitzvah. I love it, you know. And and but there's but unfortunately we're uh, we're point zero one percent of the population of the world. So there's all the other rest of the I don't know how many are in the world, right? Millions and billions or whatever, who are thinking things other than that. Perhaps there are righteous Gentiles. We won't say not. Okay, and and but but still. How much a degree of negative thoughts are bouncing around all over the place? It is a flood. Okay, we are. There is a deluge that is happening that we are walking amidst of in our daily experience. You need to escape that. You want to get a clear thought. You want to get a lucid thought. Okay, the way to do that is this meditative technique of getting the word to shine and putting yourself in it, you become Noah that goes into the ark. 
And you'll see, now I can't tell you, I, and my personal experience with, you know, in terms of my ability to practice it when I remember to practice it. But you have to try it because, I, you know, there are thoughts that come into your mind when you do this. You are opening yourself to a higher, different level of thinking, okay? You have to try it out and then you come talk to me, okay? Meanwhile, okay, you have a question? No, all right? It's also a discipline. It's, it's, it takes time. Like I said, it's Tai Chi, to... but yeah. start with the letter Beit of Baruch. It's Jewish Tai Chi. Also, they say that the positive thoughts are much more powerful than negative thoughts. Of course, of course. And that's not of course. Okay, well, I mean, it, it, you for us, know, feel better. So you don't have to worry. Your, what your are positive we doing thoughts what have a lot more. Okay, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. do you ever open up a prayer book, sir? Yes. When you next time you open up a prayer book, and you say the Shema, and if you look at the words and you see the Shin, can you, as you say that Shin, in your mind's eye, imagine it get clear and bright, so bright that you almost can't see it anymore? Can you make a visualization as if there's a door in front of you and a keyhole? And a keyhole behind that door is an, is an infinite light. Can I but there's a keyhole. Way? Work with me. <laughs> <laughs> there's a keyhole. And the keyhole is shaped like a shin. Do you know what a shin looks like? Mm -hmm. so, so you know right now. So you can imagine if there are behind that door, there's an infinite light. And the only place where the infinite light is shining through is the one little keyhole that's a shin. Can you see it? Can you picture it right now? No. <laughs> okay. Can you picture a door? Yes. Can you picture a keyhole? Yes. Can you picture a funky looking keyhole? Yes. Can you picture a funky looking keyhole that looks like a shin? Cool, maybe. And picture that there's not even a, such a bright light that's shining. Any a kind of light. light. A dull light. <laughs> A pretty blue light. Okay? Start off with something. Okay? You're right, David, you know, because this is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay? You yeah, have... I see people shaking their heads and I'm thinking, okay. Well, when you say the word Baruch... David, you have to visualize. What did you say? It's a visualization. You know what the letter looks this like. If you close class. your eyes, can you picture yeah. the letter in your mind? Yes, you can. Now, usually what we will do when we close our eyes and we picture the letter in our mind, we'll picture maybe white and black, if at all. Sometimes it'll be a gray, dull, or whatever. It'll be very hard to visualize the, the letter in your mind. But you have to practice it. And it's easy with a letter bait. It's quite a simple letter. It's not complicated like the olive, which I still have trouble with to these days. Okay? So, but a bait is, a yud is even the simplest letter. Why not go to the simplest letter? A yud. But that's the first letter of Hashem's name, isn't that scary? Yes, actually, that's a whole different technique. At Yom Limud, I'm going to give a whole meditation uh, a presentation. Yeah, yeah on, uh, on heavy stuff, okay? I mean, this happens to be the Baal Shem Tov's technique of prayer. And, and every word of Torah, mind you. Okay, in other words, every time you're reading, you should try to get the le word letters shine. to shine. Yes. How you do that? Do it. Don't try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's the just do it. If the letter shines, imagine it, picture it, and just go with it and see what happens. What? Did you pick the letter Shin for a reason? Is it the first letter of some Shema. Shema Israel. Okay. Rabbi. Yeah. So you saying that the Baal Shem Tov did this with? I mean, did he do this? It must have taken him like. 25 hours a day to pray. No, baby, you get faster. You'd be amazed at when you how fast you get, and if you're fluent. <laughs> but that's in the really what he's doing. He was really <laughs> listen. Like, like I say, it's a practice. And yes, and yeah. he would spend an hour in silent he prayer. Just a bit for a long time. In no, an hour in silent prayer. There was one great story where he was praying, and his and his students were there praying, and he kept in the Shemona Ezra, and they were hanging out, and they were done, and they were like. Mm. Starting to read books, and yeah. I'm hungry. I'm going to go home. Sandwich? Want a sandwich? Let's go. I was like, okay, make a sandwich. Mm -hmm. So they all went home, and the later he came to them, banging on all their doors, come back to the shul now. And they came back to the shul, and he says, well, let me tell you something. You know, what happens when we're all together praying? You know, this is the, the imagery. Imagine that there's this really spe special, beautiful bird, but it's very high up. The only way to get it is if we all stand on each other's shoulders. Yeah. So here I am standing on all your guys' shoulders about to get the bird, and you guys split! Thanks a lot! 
Okay? So, it's not just a bird. You understand? He, he brought down and he was unable to bring down unbelievable rules and principles of daily living that are very empowering. Not only for us, but once he brought it down and it's known, once a tzaddik brings a concept into this world, everybody gets it. Everybody, you can just get it with intuition. People just will into it. Once it's down, once it's revealed, that's why Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, once they brought it down, boom. One God, there's not even a question of one God anymore, right? Except for the atheists, okay? So, so in any case, um, he would spend a long time in praying. Okay, like I say, you're being exposed to this. You just you just have to play around with it, toy with it, practice it when you can. Don't spend an hour doing it or two hours or three if you don't have time. Okay, but you got to know this is the rule, and you and I'll tell you why it's so important in a soon. Okay, number two on that page, all the letters exist on three levels. At the same time, right? All, all the letters exist on three levels at the same time in the levels of world, souls, and godliness. What does he mean by that? When it says in, in the Parsha that you will make him tachtim, shnim, ushlishim, when you make them with lower, second, and third stories, when it's talking about the ark, that you have a lower, second, and third stories, it's talking about not an our literal ark. In other words, we're not talking about a literal world here. Parsha's Noah is not talking about literally Parsha's Noah and a flood. He's talking about a flood of thoughts. And he's talking about us in order to get out of the flood of thoughts, in order to get yourself a clear, direct thought, you have to put yourself into the ark. And the ark is called the word, and you have to make the word shine. Okay? Now, the word, each letter has three different aspects to it. It has what's called worlds, souls, and godliness. So worlds is low, is what we experience when we see in the Chumash, when we read the black on white. It's, it's a vessel, right? That's the lowest. Souls is actually the in-between. Actually, really, it is us in a certain sense. We connect to the worlds because we're in it, yet we are a soul. And then yet the soul connects godliness to the world. In other words, we're going to connect world, souls, and godliness. This is a hard one for me, but you have to know that it exists. You have to know that in Parshas Noah, there is such a thing as three levels. You have to know that in each letter, there's three different aspects of it. As a matter of fact, this book, he goes into it in a most unbelievably long way that's really quite uh, too much. Okay? Yes. Okay? But... We'll do something at the end if there's time, you know, because he goes into like each letter and each form of it, like the world, souls, and divinity of each letter. Is that in English? Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. What's the name of it? The Hebrew letters. Mm -hmm. Had a what a catchy name. <laughs> Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg. They may have it today. It's really good. Yes, it's very deep. It's like very I say, yeah, I got lost after the first two pages. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Some of the letters are juicier than others. The idea here is you. <laughs> The rabbi? What? Uh, no expectations here. I'm just trying to look at the keyhole, that the keyhole looks like a bait, maybe shin is too hard, and then there's some kind of shining light on the other side of the keyhole. And I'm not looking in the keyhole because it's going to blind me. But I see the keyhole is a big keyhole, it's a very chunky keyhole, and it looks like a bait, and there's some light shining through it. Picture that, okay? And then I picture the next letter, a reish, baruch, bait reish. And then I picture, right, Avav. And then I'll picture a Chav Sofit, right, Baruch. And then I picture them shining. And they've all joined together. Okay? I could be dancing. And you just have to know that the light, is the light, of course, the Yain Sof, the shining light, of course, is the godliness, is the aspect of godliness in it. Don't worry about necessarily the words and the souls. The idea is to focus on the godliness. Three, just... They ascend and connect and unite with each other and with godliness. In other words, all the three levels, the lower, middle, and, and third level, they connect, they ascend, they go up. You go up with those letters. Afterwards, the letters connect and unite to form words. Afterwards, they form true unions in godliness. A person needs to put his soul into each aspect of the entire process that was described. Okay. Like, imagine that, Okay. Then, we're not done. That's very deep. Then, all the worlds unite as one, 
and they ascend and make a tremendous joy and pleasure without limit. All you got to know is it makes a tremendous joy and pleasure. To unite letter to letter, to make a word, make it shine as much as you can, right? Make it shine, as a matter of fact, I told one one student of mine, you have to make it shine so bright that you don't even exist anymore. You become the letters, really. The Zen of Tefillah. Okay? You become the letters. Don't forget, they are the primordial building blocks of all of creation. What we experience in reality is not reality. Right? We think it is, but it's not reality. And we're trying to peel off the mask of matter in order to try to get a little sense, some kind of taste that there's some things that are beyond. And the way to do that is through the Hebrew letters. Don't forget the Torah, which is the blueprint of creation, was made up of the Hebrew letters. God looked into the Torah and made the world, like an like a, like a architect's blueprints. Except Rabbi Akiva Tatsi brings an unbelievable different imagery. So powerful. His imagery is, it's not like, like it's a blueprint, you make it and you leave it. It still gives everything its life. He uses the, 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 the idea of a, of a projector screen. You have a screen, you have a projector, and you have a film. Like the olden days, not everything's digital now. But in those days, it was a projector, a screen, and, and a film. And the film is before in front of the light that shines upon the screen. The screen is the world. The light is the light of God. The film is the Torah. In other words, it's the projector. It gives, the Torah gives every single thing in creation, its existence. Every single thing that we experience has a root in the blueprint in creation. Okay? That's why they ask in the Gomorrah, Haman from the Torah, where is he? Haman. Haman in, 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 the, in, 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 the, in the book of Esther. Right? Haman from the Torah, where is he? Where is he? And they found him. He's in actually in Bereshit. When Adam was hiding after he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, God said to Adam, Hamin ha'etzazeh, did you eat from this tree? Hamin, same words. And they go, there he is. The, 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 then the idea really is understand why there, right? And what does that have to do with Haman, Haman, right? Different topic. The projector was what? I'm sorry. The projector, the light from the projector is the light that God created. And God said, let there be light. And then the screen, the, the film is the Torah, and the screen is the world. We are in the world. It's three-dimensional. You don't need special glasses. 4D, 5D, okay? Don't need it, right? We're in it. Thank you much, right? My glasses are not working. I need new ones, right? Okay, so, okay, let's go on. All right. So a person needs to put his soul into each aspect of the entire process that was described. You become Noah. You become the letter. Okay? You lose yourself totally. You are no longer David. You are Dalit Vav Dalit. Now are we saying that the world was not destroyed by the flood? It was destroyed by words? <coughs> mm, what we're saying is no. Listen, I, I, I don't want to... I wanna, we don't want to talk about actual history. Well, but you can, that's what I get. We do good. You're asking very good. One of the basic fundamentals in Hasidic thought and Kabbalistic thought and those who learn the inner aspects of the Torah is to always understand that the Torah is nitzchi. Nitzchi means it is eternal. Means it, it has to have a relevance for us in the here and now. Not just a nice storybook not just a little history lesson. It has to, every single letter has to have an unbelievable relevance because we say that there are 600,000 Jews and there are 600,000 letters in the Torah. Each Jew is hooked up to a letter in the Torah. It's not, even though we look at it as a scroll and it has stories because God put it that way. God made it to be that way that a three-year-old kid could enjoy it and an 80-year-old genius could get high. Okay, off of it, right? So it's because it's that's how he could he can do what he 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 I call you call. There's nothing he can't do. So of course he made this unbelievable map that a three year old kid can go and learn about Abraham and Noah and all that kind of stuff. But yet, if you peel off the layers, there's much much deeper meanings. I'm not so we'll say there is a historical event, but we'll also say 
that there's also a relevance in the here and now for us in terms of our flood, the floods that are in our own lives and how we can get out of it through a meditation, which is really prayer, which is really joining the letters to form words. Teva means ark. Okay? Did I answer your question? Somewhat. Somewhat. Maybe. Okay. So, Rabbi? Yeah? You mentioned earlier the 22 primordial energy fields. Yes. Is there a connection between that and there's, there's 23 pairs of chromosomes? Is there a connection? There's 22. One hakolel. There's always the achad hakolel. In Kabbalistic terms, I'm well, not saying this. I, I haven't thought about it. I, I, I never heard from anybody. We do. They do have what's called the one for the inclusive. In other words, once you put together pieces, yes, there are 22 pieces, but then there's the inclusive piece of the one unit, That's that the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah, so there's 22 main chromosomes, and the final pair is the, 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 the male and the female. You said there's 22 or 23? There's 23, 23 total, but the last pair is the, is the X and the Y, or the X and the X in case of... Four. And what's the 23rd one? The X is and the Y. The George? Sex, sex chromosome. Sex chromosome. Okay. So there's 22 main chromosomes, and that's what... You know, the, 20, the, the final pair is just like you said, what holds it together. I'm together. sure there's somebody who wrote about it. Probably Zamir Cohen. He writes all those books that are really gr- um, unbelievable stuff where he compares science to Torah. In any case, um, okay, so tremendous, okay, number six was then the world unite as one and they ascend and make a tremendous joy and pleasure without limit. These are the three levels corresponding to the three levels of the ark that was built according to the divine instruction. Make it with lower, second, and third stories. These are the worlds, the souls, and godliness, as is intimated in the Zohar, that there are three worlds that we have in our tradition, right? Up to Latzilut, we have Asiya, Yitzira, and, and Buriya, okay? The three worlds. Eight, okay? Eight, now, you thought everything was funky up until now, <laughs> Okay. A person needs to hear each word that is spoken. That's halacha. You have to hear it in your inner ear. <coughs> Why? So I'm not sure I have an answer for this. The Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, is called the world of speech, deep word. It is as if she is the word or words that are being spoken, and he, meaning the person speaking them, is her instrument. We kind of touched on this uh, in my in the Rabbi Nachman class at Myerland. That, you know, we, we, we say now that tefillah is an exile. Prayer is an exile. People pray be just because it's an obligation and they want to get rid of the obligation. It's not that they want to pray. It's not that they want to connect. God wants to be intimate with us. He loves us. He's crazy about us. Most of us maybe are not as crazy about him. Okay, we'd like to be. Our inner soul is definitely on fire. We're just trying to connect to that inner soul that's on fire, right? Takes takes work, right? To, to, to pray, okay? And maybe even sometimes we can actually pray and, and and totally get into it and enjoy it and look forward to the next time that we pray, right? Imagine that. But the idea here is nowadays tefillah is considered to be in exile. So we want to get tefillah, we want to get prayer out of exile, okay? The idea here is there's, a lot, there's some techniques how to get prayer out of exile. But that's one reason why we say, just before we go into the silent prayer, we say Ga'al Yisroel. One of that, that Ga'al Yisroel, according to Rabbi Nachman, is the, releasing, is, the, is the releasing of prayer from exile, and then we go into our Shimon Esrei, our silent prayer. So the idea here is, interestingly enough, Prayer, if it, it would, in potential, let's say, and in a certain sense, in a certain dimension, it is out of exile. If prayer were, let's say, if we were to really grasp the power of prayer, the words of our mouth become what's called Devar Hashem, meaning the Word of God. Meaning it hooks up to the worlds beyond, the worlds beyond, beyond everything in creation. It hooks up to be... And God spoke and the world came to being. It gets to be what we say, abracadabra, right? Abracadabra, two Aramaic words, ebarakadibara. That's where it came from. I will create as I speak, as the word. Because that really, in potential, our mouths can be very, very powerful through our prayers. And in the days of Mashiach, 
right? When prayer is certainly released out of exile, so then they'll be lining up on your door, David, with their sick plant for you to pray for their sick plant. There'll be like a, like a thousand people out there. This one will have their dog, Fifi. That one will have a sick plant. And maybe some other people will all have something else that needs to be... Look, can you fix this arm, please? Can you pray for this arm? Okay? And they'll ask you <laughs> to pray because they'll understand that when you pray... Now, the, the biggest example is Reb Hanina Bendosa. Reb Hanina Bendosa used to pray for people and he used to know after he prayed who was going to live and who was going to die. And they asked him, how do you know? So he said, when the prayer came out of my mouth smoothly, I knew I would be answered and I was not blocked. When it didn't come out smoothly, I knew it was blocked. It wasn't going to get answered. Yeah. Right? Who was this? Rabbi? Rabbi Hanina Bendosa brings it down in Gemara Tainus. He would, many miracles were, were, came through him. He was the guy who, uh, who, you know, his daughter put the vinegar in instead of the oil oh, for no. Shabbos candles. Mm-hmm. And they go, hey, Daddy, it's candle lighting and I put vinegar. Right? And he goes, let the one who says that oil is flammable say now vinegar is flammable. He uses words. And they lit him and then he went, like, cool. Right? Bring the chicken. <laughs> right? <laughs> no wonder why this went out. Okay, fine. Okay. I knew there was a beeping somewhere. Okay? Give me a favor. See if you can put the batteries in this. You can... Okay. So, all right. So now, why is divine? So the divine presence is called the world of speech. And here we are. We're the instrument of this divine presence, the world of speech. Because when the word comes out of the mouth, it is very powerful. It is creation. Don't forget, the letters are very creative energies. It's not simple. And the problem is, most people take it very lightly. You know, really, God, when he made, when it went up in his mind to make a creation, so, and, and of course, we know that he made the creation through utterances. He spoke. Well, he doesn't need to speak. Really, the speech, really, uh, I Rebbe explained it, was for us. How do we communicate with each other? So it's called thought, word, thought. That's the formula. God has a thought. He puts it into a word. And then from that word, hopefully, will be recreated the same thought in our minds. It's how you communicate in terms of, uh, in the world. Speech is a very heavy thing. Okay? It's the thought, word, thought principle. In any case, the idea here is if, the, if, if prayer goes out of exile, our mouth becomes the conduit, the instrument from which the, which, which the divine presence is there, so it must be heard. Okay? Yeah. Doesn't thought become concrete things? N- not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because otherwise, maybe we'd all go crazy. It's like God can think and it becomes. Right? We need to go through, if we want to build a house, we don't just think of the house. Or we mm, wiggle our nose and then a house comes, or whatever have you. We have to go through the entire action of doing all of the planning and lumber and everything else, and the headaches with the contractors. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, okay. So the words must go out shining as it is written, make a shining light. He must make... Okay, <clears throat> so here, i got to go in the Hebrew here, because it's just much better. Did you turn it on? Cool. Okay. So he says, where is it? Ah. So we become what's called the Shushbina, right? We become the instrument for the word that comes out, the vehicle. And shining, what I mean by shining, that has to come out bright. Velasos Nachas Ruach Liotzro. And to make Nachas Ruach, which we spoke about last week, to his creator. Okay? The idea here is of, of us trying to engage in this form of prayer is to give God, give God nachas. Nachas, we have a, don't have a translation for, correct? I don't know if we can translate it. Nachas, gratification, not a good word. 
Nachas means like Noach. It's like kind of a resting spirit. It's basically the feeling that you get of overwhelming love when you see your kid it do, do, does things that make you proud. You see that the kid is a good kid, a good person in the world, an upstanding person with integrity. That gives a parent nachas. Or if a student does that, that gives the Rebbe nachas. Okay? Or you see people doing things right, it gives you nachas. Okay? Pleasure. It's pleasure, but it's a different kind. It's, a, it's kind of a prideful pleasure. It can't be translated. I'm, you know, dodging around the point. But Sarih emuna gadola lazed. Now this is the point. You need unbelievable emuna for this. <laughs> why? Because you're going to ask, if you're going to try this out at home, why am I doing this, Rabbi? I don't understand one thing that's going on. Right? You have to have emuna. You have to have faith. Okay? Shehashchina nikras emuna amen, which is really an unbelievable line. I tried to look this up in the Zohar. It's not where he quoted it. So I'll have, you have to leave it for another time. On the other hand, um, on the, this requires great faith because the Shekhinah is also called the faith of the faithful. Okay? It's a connection to the Divine Presence and requires faith. I don't know if I have a great explanation for this line. If you have something, that something comes up, I'd be happy for you to share. You see the line where I'm at? This requires great faith because the Shekhinah is also called the faith of the faithful. I never had a really good explanation, but we'll have to leave it. On the other hand, faithlessness sows dissension among the primordial energies. Aha. Uh -huh. See, notice how even my father-in-law called it primordial energies. Ubelo emuna nikra chasrishalam nargan mafrid aluf, which means the axe that separates. Okay? So in other words, you're either joining the letters together to form words, or you're not involved and not interested in this, and you'll lose out. Okay, there was once a great uh, um, story that it's known that uh, in in in, uh, in, in uh, passed down the Hasidic masters say if a person goes forty days without saying Devarim Batalim, without saying useless words for forty days, right, he will get a revelation of Elijah the prophet. Boom, sounds like a plan, right? Forty days, no wasted words. Okay, no Devar and Vitaly. Not George. How you doing? None of that. Okay, so people did that. This one guy did it, and he came to the Rebbe and he goes, "How come I did it? Forty days, and Elijah didn't come, right?" So what was the Rebbe's answer? You're not gonna like this. He says, "Well, you said to heal him." Yeah, I read to heal him. Did you say it like with the letter shining? No. Wasted words. Devar and Vitaly. Okay? On his level, not ours. Don't worry. Okay? But the idea here is every word of Torah and every letter needs to shine. In other words, you are connecting to the, to the Ein Sof, to the unlimited. It's an opportunity to connect in a unique way. It does require faith. And he even goes on to say, like this, there are lots, like I gave you last week, deep, deep, deep kavanot, deep, deep, unbelievable intentions in the prayer. Remember I discussed last week the Biahava and the whole paradigm of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. and how they match up and what is that about, Rabbi? You left my head spinning, okay? Deep, deep kavanot, but he says, if you do this technique, all the kavanot are included in it, Okay? If you can follow this. So listen, I've been on Avo just that one prayer, I think for quite a few years now, just to try to do it with that one prayer, okay? And if I have to look in a sitter, then I look in the sitter, okay? To, to remember the forms and definitely the spelling, because I'm a terrible speller in Hebrew, okay? But the idea here is, why, okay, I'm gonna, why is this so important? Okay, it's great technique, Rabbi, really, shh. Really heavy stuff. So, I got to bring the letter of the Baal Shem Tov, the famous letter that he sent to his brother-in-law, uh, Rabbi Gershon, who was in Eretz Yisrael at the time. He sent him a letter. The letter, the letter never made it. It got found. Of course, somebody opened the letter because it was after several years, and they read what was inside. And this is the most powerful letter which makes all of Hasidim just go nuts. Okay? 
because this talks about his meditative experience where he did an out of body experience on a Rosh Hashanah, and he went up, he did an Aliyat Neshama, he went out of body up into the upper worlds. <coughs> he was guided by his spirit guide, who was the prophet Achia Hashiloni, who guided him upon worlds, upon worlds, upon worlds, and upper worlds, and he saw the Sutton prosecuting, as that's what he does on Rosh Hashanah, and he saw terrible, terrible decrees that were going to be issued, right? And his son was real happy, and he's like, meh. But anyways, he came, went up. He continued to go up until he got to the hall of the Mashiach, of the Messiah, who sat around with all of the other righteous people around him. And that's when he went to the Mashiach, and he goes, when are you coming? And you know the answer? Today. What? Today. <laughs> no. That's what Elijah answered when they asked him in Rome, right? That's what Elijah answered. No, he answered. I'll answer. I gotta. Right? First of all, he saw great joy up there. When he went up there, the joy was unbelievable. He thought the joy was because he died. Okay? He must be, I'm dead, and they're really happy I'm joining the party up there. They said, no, 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 you didn't die, right? No, you didn't die. So I asked the mouth of the Mashiach, and he answered me. And this you will know. In the time that will become public, your teachings, and it will be revealed in the world, and it will spread out like the wellsprings abroad, what that I have taught you, and what that you have grasped. And also that the other people will be able to make what's called these Yehudim, these meditations, the meditations, and they'll be able to do out-of-body experiences, aliot, they'll be able to go up like you, right? And then, yakolu kola klipot, all of the forces of evil will be destroyed, and it will be in a time of grace and salvation. In other words, that's when I'm coming, when your teachings are out there, okay? Uh, yeah, for Tamasi. So that Baal Shem Tov continues and goes like, when is that going to happen, man? When are you going to have, like, Bill the, the, Bill the, uh, the clerk going to be able to do these meditations and go up, up to Shemayim? When is that going to happen? He's blown away. He's very, got real sad. They go, no, no, no. So he goes on and he says, well, they revealed to me three segulot, three special things to do that you can do. A segula is like a it's hard to define segula. Segula is like an action that has an ominous uh, energy to it that can uh, pro, uh, propensuate a, 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 a um, that can uh, and a, um, precipitate a manifestation. Like one of the segulos to get married was always hold on to the chuppah pole at a wedding, right? Right? Hold on to the hoopah pole, it'll be a segula to get married. I did that for 10 years. Okay. You got married? Yeah, I did, thank Baruch Hashem. 10 years, segula. Segula means you want now. Okay. Did your arms get tired? No, I didn't hold on to them for 10 years. What? Did you say 10 years? No! Uh, 10 straight that's years, right. Ian. 10 years, I've known all this hoopah pole. Never a bad man, no, no. Meaning, like you know, I, every t I would, you know, every time there was a wedding, I'd try to grab one of those poles for ten years. Every time there was a wedding, I'd grab onto a pole. So you did do it for ten years. Not ten years straight. <laughs> yeah. I went to the bathroom in between and maybe had to take something. Okay. <laughs> Sandwich holding onto the pole. Bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, let's 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 keep it PG. All right. So in any case, okay. So anyways, they say they revealed to him three special actions that you could do and three holy names, and then the Baal Shem Tov went on and said, "Yeah, with this it could be possible." He says, but he continued in the letter and saying they didn't let me to reveal it. And I says, oh, please, let me just do my brother-in-law. Oh, just one guy, just one. <laughs> no, not even him. Right. Oh, please, please. Okay. So he says, they did not give me any permission to reveal these things. But then he goes on to the letter. And then the letter explains what, we're, what I told you. In other words, the meditation of joining the letters together, obviously, he hides it in a certain way. They do say in the letter is revealed the names and the sukulot, these special actions that you can do in this letter. As a matter of fact, 
this letter was an uh, obligation for uh, for one of the uh, big Hasidic masters, right? He, that he would read it every day. He would never refrain from reading this specific letter, right? Just like putting on tefillin. And uh, and he said, uh, in that in that letter, he did learn the three names, and his Kirmahim, but he didn't mention what they are, right? These names that he learned, but in truth, they are hinted at in a very hidden way, and it's possible to know by way of them the end of the Geula. You can know the redemption by it. In other words, you get some kind of ins- pro- prophetic inspiration from the letter. In any case, he does go to say that through the Yehudim, and then he does start to talk about the letters, and, and to, do, to go and connect the letters from lower, middle, upper, and to have this kind of meditative technique is, is uh, something that, uh, that is, seems to be quite obvious, and that's why it's in this letter, is in the section dealing with this, why it would be a, such, such an unbelievable thing to bring the Mashiach. Okay? So listen, it's a practice, it's long, we're going to stop now. Okay? But the idea here is you have been exposed. Okay? Letters are not simple things. And if you could just start with just one letter, just one, don't freak it out. Yud. Combination of a name is a segula. Mm-hmm. Combination. Of a, of a name. The letters of a name. Of course. Yes. It's a Why? How do you know that's a segula? I mean. Well, they say it's like a candle. Okay. That's what I. Okay, because usually a name is a name, a segula is a segula. Segula is like an action, like and a name is a name. It's a le- Okay. Lighting a candle. It's an energy, not a Rabbi, Okay. Is there a name for this type of visualization? Is there a name for this visualization, this prayer process? No. It said Sohar Tase Hateva. Those are the letters that it says in Parsha. The words that we read. So a shining you should make for the word, for the ark. That's wow. where it comes from. Okay. Wow. So until you've practiced it, until you've tasted it, I'm just telling you, well, the pudding is really good. But I've been telling you all about the pudding, but you've got to taste the pudding, okay? It's not going to do it unless okay. you try to practice it and you put all your energy into the bait of Baruch. And just start with that, one letter at a time. That's how I started, okay? And now I'm going to tell you, I get unbelievable insights when I pray. Unbelievable things. You get unbelievable things. It's almost like drives whatever you learn right in. It like almost sucks it into your vortex and you get a hop. Hop is like an insight until you tried it, you know, so then, then, you know, so you can continue doing what you're doing. You can take the red pill and wake up like any other guy or you can follow, go into the rabbit hole with the the blue pill or the red pill. Anyways, (laughs) I get it confused every time. Was it the blue pill or the red pill? You guys never saw The Matrix, okay? Yeah, the movie. Yeah. All right? I forgot. Anybody remember? (laughs) Whatever it is, you get the point, right? The idea here is, is this is a technique to join letter by letter, make it a word, make it shine as much as you can. You got to practice it, try it, and, and develop it. And this, God willing, Help, you know, is unbelievable, will offer unbelievable insights and more things. And also just included in it, every, all of the kavanot are inside this technique. So you can understand, here's a completely different doorway to prayer. Okay, it's completely, nothing like you ever would imagine. Okay, and it circumvents a lot of complications of the kavanot, of the Kabbalistic kavanot that we have handed down from different other Kabbalists about prayer. All right? Good. Thank you. Next week I'm here, but the week after that I'm not here. I'll be in Mexico. Mexico. Strawberries (laughs) waiting for me. (laughs) They all greet me. (laughs) Like the munchkin. Say that again? I missed it. How about strawberries? This is from regular strawberries. No. Oh, because I blessed them. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.